I love the unique atmosphere that you are part of when you are sitting on the hill in the park. You have cars go by and you have people playing and uh, you have people walking by not sure what's happening. One thing that I liked seeing tonight was uh, when the cars come by and they realize what's happening and then they slow down and then all of a sudden they realize they're blocking everybody and then there's like the the like quick burst of gas. It's a very diverse crowd that comes in. There's a lot of kids, families, young adults, some passers-by who just hear the music and stop, which I think is one of the really great things about the garage. There are a wide variety of musical venues in Charlottesville these days. Some seat hundreds or even thousands. Our guest today, however, is the founder of one of our most unique music and art settings located right here on First Street, where one might actually expect to find a parked car rather than a group of musicians. Join us as we talk with Sam Bush about the garage. Come on. I've been through this area a bunch uh, to see shows at the garage and I always have wanted to play it. And uh, it's a Charlottesville tradition, so we're looking forward to getting our, our first chance to play. Oh, I found silence in the shade. And for 1,000 years I stayed. On a beautiful night like tonight, we were just walking and we looked up the street and I said, I wonder if they're doing a concert at the garage tonight. You get inside this tiny little space and it feels very intimate. And people say that it feels like it could be someone's bedroom. But then it's also totally public and accessible. Yes, it's a musical venue. It's also uh, a venue for exhibitions, workshops, theater, potlucks. And it is located on First Street. Yes. And it's a garage. I mean, there's nothing like that maybe anywhere. You've, as much as we want to duplicate it in every city around uh, the country, uh, it's, it feels utterly unique. When you experience art when it's least expected, uh -huh. you know, you see this in the murals, you know, around Richmond or now Charlottesville, yes. um, and it catches people off guard and they're, they're able to experience this art without a veil of expectation. They're totally, they're totally surprised. They're on their way downtown to meet up with a friend and they hear this string band from New Orleans or this incredible vocalist from Brooklyn and they're blown away. And you know, a lot of times they'll text their friends and say, you guys gotta get up here. Yeah, um, it, yeah. Come experience this. I wish I got to see you riding horses. Your mother from the window, please no jumping. We're a music venue, but we're in a residential neighborhood. We want to be friendly neighbors. We have to keep it to quieter acts. Usually that means folk, sometimes classical, a lot of Americana. Americana, a lot, a lot of Americana. Um, and thankfully, there, there's no shortage of acts like that. We, we get tons of emails from bands that are maybe on their way to D.C. or down to Nashville, and they're looking for a stop on their tour when they, they can just help pay for gas or something. And Because there's no guarantee, there's no financial guarantee, it's just this teeny space. Yeah, we can't ticket any of the, the, the events because they're all free for everybody. Right. Ju we just pass a tip jar. But yet, there's a waiting list to play. Why are musicians so excited to be at the garage? You know, we've we've hosted some great bands that have made it big, like the Lumineers, Lumineers right? They, they're they're the they're the biggest ones. And um, they were there on a rainy day, and there were what eight people? There were eight people on a <laughs> Sunday night. I know. And, and now, and no one knew. And so, um, but really talented bands will play there, um, and I don't know why, but I I have a feeling that it's um, bands these days. It's so hard in the music industry to make a connection with people. And so much of um, the industry has, has put an importance on the experience. Bands would much rather p play to 50 people on a hillside for a couple hundred dollars than play to 200 people who aren't listening to them. Right. Um, and there's such a strong sense of intimacy, like I said, at these shows where people really listen. And people yeah. are there because they want to hear good music. Everything, but not too much of anything. 
The music in this space is all very different, but it all fits the garage very perfectly. Um, so there's like a good mix of rock or Americana, but also, also things that are more like synthesized. So it's nice to be able to see all the different varieties that come in. It's fun to do more intimate shows like this, you know. Going from bars and venues, you know, you play a lot of loud places. You know, a lot of times we follow a, a rock band or something and people are chatty and talking, but a place like this, it kind of demands the attention naturally, you know. Yeah, I don't know if there's too many spaces you get to play where there's a road in between you and the audience. A car might drive by, people are walking by, talking a little bit, but everyone just kind of still trusts that we're all, you know, we're all here and watching the music and listening. It's owned by Christ Church, it's a ministry of Christ Church, but um, it's not used to bludgeon people into church. It's, um, it, it exists because we believe art should be supported for art's sake. People come, it's free, uh, people can just show up. And so it feels to me just like a gift that we give to the community. Let's talk about how the series started. What inspired you to start this? So it wasn't my idea. I'm credited to being a co-founder because uh, of my proximity to these people who started it. The rector, the priest, was walking with, um, we had an artist in residence back in 2008, and she wanted to um, uh, create this space that was um, connected to the church and supported by the church, but also um, uh, it, it stood alone um, to the p so that anyone could um, feel welcomed and a part of it and comfortable and as they were walking by the garage where the organist used to park. Yeah, that was, it really was a garage. Yeah, <laughs> so she's pulling out of the garage and it was this aha moment of perfect. Let's just lay some wood paneled floors down and maybe get some clamp on lights and see where this goes. And tell us too, <coughs> tell us about um, some of the types of workshops and some of the exhibitions that have been in there as well because people love those too. We've hosted some great shows. Uh, Lauren Goins um, just had an exhibit. She's in the band Lowland Hum and um, she's done all their album art and she had an exhibit there a couple months ago. Another exhibit, uh, Karina Monroy, uh, she uh, is an extremely talented local artist, first generation uh, Mexican immigrant, really enjoyed that one. And uh, workshops. Uh, workshops. Workshops. We had a great one where um, this artist, Ryan Trott, he gave a workshop on how to custom design things like tote bags and t-shirts and people just brought all sorts of things and he did these cool drawings and showed how you could make something that was a little bland really cool. But also, you know, mask making workshops, jewelry designing workshops, uh, we had a knitting workshop. It's really fun. I think the magic of the garage is to bring um, as much as I enjoy the big groups for concerts, I love bringing in small groups, just 10 people, um, learning how to do something together. Yeah. And just sharing sort of an intimate experience. You really create this bond over a couple hours even. Um, oh, yeah. And then people are walking by and they're, they're seeing this it. and yeah. they might stop and listen. And my hope, I can be sort of an idealist with the garage, but my hope is that anyone who experiences it feels like they've really been a part of something that's unique. This venue on a side street with a, a bank to sit on is something people like, the idea that they discovered something. And, um, and they, the, the artists are always just beautiful and seem to enjoy being here, so. If you imagine a jam band starting out in their garage, but just elevate that. There's an intimacy to it that you can't get at really anywhere else, I think, in town at least, and a lot of other places. I am only what has gone and what remains. You bring in regional and national acts, but there's always a, a local component to it as well, and yeah. we've got such great great local talent, yeah, so yeah. it's not hard to fill those spots. We've built up a long list of, of local openers. We always reserve the opener spot, just a half hour um, spot um, for, for a local artist. Well, and then that makes me think of you because you are a founding <laughs> member of Hill and Wood. 
yep. a band that people love in this community. Now you've been focusing on some other things. Right, namely my baby boy. <laughs> I'm also going to, um, to grad school, I'm going to seminary this year, and yeah. um, so I'm, my time has, I mean, focus has been elsewhere, but um, I mean, it started with pretty much just me, and the setup, the takedown, the marketing, the booking, it was, it was all me. And you know, I was in my mid-20s, so I didn't, I didn't have anything better to do, and it was... And that uh, was great. Right, that and, was it's, great. And, and I feel like for a space like this, it's important for um, its director to be really passionate about it. And so, of course, with my own um, musical career, like the stars aligned for me to just um, put so much into this little space. But then, um, you know, for a community space to actually be a community space, it needs to be more than just one person. Right. So um, the, over the past few years, we've had advanced managers and uh, a volunteer base that has just been essential. It looks like I'm not going to be around for uh, the next couple of years at least, and to be able to pass it on to someone else who cares just as much and can keep it moving uh, and maintain kind of the heart and spirit of the space. Um, so, yeah, so what, what are your hopes for the garage in the future, whether you're a part of it or not, but what do you want to see? My hope is that it will always be um, a space that is really just a gift. I hope people just enjoy that. Um, and I think they have over the years, just as we have. Yeah, I know they have. Thank you, Sam. We just went out to dinner on the mall, and then we sat down on uh, the park uh, grass. I think a jazz band might have been playing, and I thought to myself, what a cool thing this is. Oh yeah, we do this. <laughs> uh, this is, I'm so glad we do this. I had forgotten somehow that it was part of what we do, and I just was so glad as a person that the garage exists. Mm -hmm.